in the last chunk, we decided that you can't just look at your R and R squared values if you fit a model. We decided that determining if your model is appropriate means that you got to look at what it means in context, particularly the growth in context. Um, but let's finish off by saying, like, wait a minute, what exactly is R and R squared? Uh, so R is only about linear relationships in data. Uh, you might have noticed that when you fit a nonlinear model, uh, the R disappeared and you only had R squared. So R is a number whose values can only bet be between negative one and positive one. And the number tells you two things. It tells you the strength and the direction of a linear relationship. Uh, and actually, you can have an R value without any model at all. The model is your equation that predicts uh, what the Y value should be as a function of the X value. Um, but even before you have a best fit line, you can calculate R just based on your data itself. Um, it's called the correlation coefficient, and it's about how correlated um, is your X and Y values. Um, so R is really not about a model. R is really about your data. Um, here are some illustrations of what different uh, R value, or like what different data with different R values would look like. Um, and again, you can have these without the red lines. But if your if your data is perfectly linear and the relationship is positive, meaning that as x increases, y increases, then your R value will be one. Um, notice that uh, in this, it, it might look like R is telling you the slope. It does not tell you the slope. So if we had uh, a slope that was like one tenth, so perfectly linear data, it perfectly makes a line, but the slope is very, very small, but still positive, the R value would still be one. And so here you can see that as the data is spreading out, so the line is less and less of a strong fit, um, until you get a scatter where the line doesn't really fit the data at all, or rather no line would fit this data, um, R value is going towards zero. So the absolute value of R is telling you about the strength of the linear relationship. So here, R uh, as negative one and R as positive one, those are equally strong relationships because the absolute value is one. Uh, it's just that the sign positive versus negative is telling you is the relationship a positive one or an inverse one, a negative one. So real quick, if you want to uh, say out loud approximately what R value would you give to each of these graphs? I think I'd probably estimate this one to be maybe 0.3, maybe negative 0.3, maybe zero. Seems about right. Let's talk about R squared. Um, R squared is sometimes called the coefficient of determination. <clears throat> um, and you can think about it as what percent of the variability in your Y value observations is explained by your equation, is explained by your model. Um, that's a big sentence. Let's break it apart a little bit. So here's the perspective you want. The thing that we're trying to understand is the variability in our Y measurements. So what I've done here is I've taken all this data, which has a pretty clear trend to it, uh, and, I've, and I've projected it all horizontally onto the Y axis. So in other words, I'm ignoring all the X coordinates, and I'm only looking at the Y coordinates, which, are, uh, which represent the thing that we're trying to predict. So let's pretend we're not looking at X at all. We're just looking at our Y observations. You could calculate the average Y value for all of our data points, and it's here with this blue line. And you could ask, if you're just looking at Y values, you could ask, hey, how come some Y values are way above the average and some way below the average? Why is there variation at all in the thing that we're measuring? We, we want to be able to explain that variability. Um, and maybe that variability is just because of measurement error. You know, maybe all of these different observations in reality have the same Y value. It's just that I'm really bad at measuring them. And so each time I try and measure this Y value, sometimes my measurements are too large, sometimes too small. That happens. You know, some things are very difficult to measure. Um, or it could be that maybe it's just random variation in the thing that we're measuring. But there's no particular pattern. There's no, there's no other thing that would let us predict. It's just like the thing we're measuring just has random variation. But maybe there's another variable that influences the thing that we're measuring. And that's what our model would be useful for. So 
If there's another variable that influences the thing that we're measuring, you could ask, what's the relationship? Is it a linear relationship? Is it a quadratic? Is it exponential? And that's where your model comes in. Um, so here I have a linear relationship, the green line. And so I would want to know, uh, so, so what, the, what the linear model is saying is it's saying, we think that the value of this x variable has a linear relationship to the y observations. And so if we want to know why do certain y values, uh, why are certain y values above the average, the answer is, because their x values have a certain, uh, their x values are large enough. So uh, here for our linear model, the r squared is 0.92, which means that 92% of the variability in y is explained by its linear relationship to the x value. Um, but the problem is, you can see that there's still some variability left over. Um, what does that mean? What that means is, if I was going to use my model to predict what's the y value when x is 600, I would predict here. Um, but our actual data doesn't always perfectly fit our model. We have some data points are above, some data points are below. And so um, this extra leftover variability, looking at the residuals, how far above or below our model is our data, that's the remaining 8% of the variation that we're failing to explain with our green line. Um, here, and so like, let's look at this one with less data. So here our R squared is 90%. So 90% of the variation around the average Y value is explained by this other X variable. Um, but you know, about, about 10%, a little less than 10% is the leftover variation. And that's how much above or below uh, our model the Y values are. Um, this exponential model is explaining a lot more of the variability. Um, and you can tell it's explaining a lot more because they're, the, they're, the overall magnitude of the residuals is smaller. So all the points are closer to our actual model, so 99.3%. But let's say out loud one more time, how could it be worse to choose a model that explains 99.3% of the thing we're trying to explain, which is... Uh, the variability in the viewable area of all of our measurements. So it might be worse to choose a model that explains more of our observations because the purpose of our model is not actually to explain the observations we've already made. It's to predict, is to accurately predict future observations. And it could be future observations in the same interval that we've already measured in, but it could be a new occasion, or it could be to extrapolate beyond the measurements we've taken uh, to new larger measurements. So that's the key. The key is R squared tells you how much of your existing measurements have you explained, but that's not really what models are for.